Hi, I am Renmark and welcome to our video tutorial about Java programming. In this video, we will talk about lesson 20.2 which is polymorphism, one of the four pillars of the object-oriented programming. So let's get started. The next pillar of the object-oriented programming language is the polymorphism and to give you a bird's eye view, Kung anong ibig sabihin ng polymorphism, you can take a look at this photo. This photo depicts that a human commanded the animals to speak. At mapapasin ninyo sa isang command lang na na-invoke nung a human, ay iba-iba na yung mga nakukuha niyang response. Siyempre, sasabihin niyo sa akin na malamang, sir, no? Iba-iba iba talaga yan kasi... Uh, Iba yung sound ng pato dun sa sound ng aso at dun sa pusa. Then if that's the case, no, then nagets nyo na yung general idea ng polymorphism. Again, no, kung nagets nyo yung ganun kasimpleng common sense na nung yung humans, kinuman nyo yung mga animals na speak. And then the duck says quack, the uh, dog says woof, and then the cat says meow. Iba-iba yung mga naging response nila, pero isa lang yung command na ginamit, then that is exactly how polymorphism works. Polymorphism. The word polymorphism means having many forms. In simple words, we can define polymorphism as the ability of a message to be displayed in more than one form. So, kagaya nga na pinakita ko sa picture, no, kanina doon sa last slide, ang ibig sabihin ng polymorphism is yung ability ng isang message na may display or may output ng iba't ibang itsura. Poly comes from two words. Yung first word na poly, ang ibig sabihin nun is marami, and then yung word na morph is form or itsura. In object-oriented programming, Polymorphism behaves exactly the same to the example na pinakita ko sa inyo kanina. Another example of polymorphism, no, a real life example. A person at the same time can have different characteristics. For example, like a man, at the same time, a father, a husband, or an employee. So, the same person poses different behavior in different situation. This is called polymorphism. We can think of the person as the superclass na may nakadefine na properties at behaviors. Parang kagaya lang ng ginawa natin nung inheritance. So, kung gagawa tayo ng subclass na ang pangalan is man at mag inherit siya from the person, may certain properties tayo na babaguhin mula dun sa na inherit nating property dun sa kanyang parent class. And also, it goes the same for the example na kagaya ng father, ng husband, and employee child class na definitely ay mag inherit mula dun sa man class. Iisang tao or person pero magkakaiba ng behaviors sa iba't ibang situation. Okay? Polymorphism is considered as one of the important features of the object-oriented programming. Polymorphism allows us to perform single action in different ways. In other words, polymorphism allows you to define one interface and have multiple implementations. The word poly, kagaya nga na sinabi ko kanina sa inyo, means many and morphs means forms. So, it means many forms. So, na-discuss ko na yan kanina. So, let's move on. There are two types of polymorphism. Ito na tawag nating compile time polymorphism at yung runtime polymorphism. So pag-usapan muna natin yung compile time polymorphism. It is also known as static polymorphism. This type of polymorphism is achieved by function overloading or operator overloading. So, since narinig nyo yung word na overloading, and yes, basically, ilang beses na natin ginawa itong overloading na ito. Overloading is a form of compile time polymorphism, wherein isang method call lang yung gagawin natin, pero may tendency na iba-iba yung magiging output niya 
based dun sa kung anong parameter ang ipinasa mo sa kanya. And that is the concept of polymorphism in the first place. Method overloading. When there are multiple functions with the same name but different parameters, then these functions are said to be overloaded. Functions can be overloaded by change in the numbers of arguments or in the change in type of arguments. So, na-discuss na natin yung part na to no, ng maraming beses. So, at marami na rin tayong example na ginawa about dito. Kaya nga, we will now going to move on with this slide. Kung meron tayong method overloading, meron din tayong tinatawag na operator overloading. Java also provides an option to overload operators. For example, we can make the operator plus, no, yung addition symbol natin, first string class to concatenate two strings. We know that this is addition operator whose task is to add two operands. So, a single operator addition, when placed between integer operands, adds them, and when placed between string operands, concatenates them. So, ito yung magandang halimbawa ng operator overloading, yung plus sign. Kasi pares natin nagagamit ito for concatenation and for addition purposes. Pero depende dun sa mga operands natin. Kung yung mga operands natin, strings, or kahit isa dun, merong strings, magkoconcatenate lang yan. Pero kapag naman numbers o pure numbers lahat yung mga operands natin, then magpe-perform siya ng addition. Isang symbol lang yung gagamitin natin pero depende do sa kung paano natin ginamit yung magiging behavior niya. That is still an example of operator polymorphism or operator overloading. In Java, only the addition operator can be overloaded to add integers and to add uh, and to concatenate strings. So malinaw na sinasabi dito sa slide na to na ang plus operator lang ang operator na pwede nating i-overload. Walang ibang example ng operator overloading na, na pwedeng gamitin sa Java maliban sa addition symbol. Okay? So to further understand, as always, we will going to create a Java program that will implement the compile time polymorphism concept in Java. So let's get started. I have here no already opened uh, three and created pala uh, long class. Uh, we have the shape class, the circle class, and the polymorphism demo class. The merong main method. Okay, so para magawa natin ang polymorphism. Madalas kailanganin din natin i-apply yung konsepto syempre ng inheritance. Kasi uh, kaya tayo nagpo-polymorphism is meron tayong mga bagay na na-inherit mula dun sa isang parent class. So dito sa ating shape class, no, ito yung magiging parent class natin. Ngayon, sisimulan na natin gawin yung mga property na meron sa isang shape. For example, gagawa ko ng public string na ang pangalan ay name. And then, gagawa din ako ng isang public na int. At yung pangalan would be number of sides. Okay? Ngayon, maliban dyan, gagawa ako ng uh, dalawang method siguro uh, para meron tayong magamit dun sa ating shape class. So, isa sa mga method na nasa isip ko is yung paggawa ng uh, method na get area ang return type niya will be double. At tatanggap siya ng isang parameter na syempre double din. So, ang magiging parameter niya would be size. Ngayon, uh, ganito ang gagawin ngayon natin. Itetest natin kung if yung number of sides na property is equals to 3. For example, then ang gagawin natin, magre-return tayo ng ganito. Size times size divide by 2. Okay? So, uh, tuloy ko muna no, yung ginagawa natin para mamaya na lang explanation. So, else if, kung yung numbers of sides naman natin is 4, then hindi na natin kailangan mag-divide. Otherwise, no, else, 
then you just have to return 0. That's it. Ngayon, ang ginagawa natin ganito kasimple, uh, meron tayo sa method na get area ang pangalan at tatanggap yan ng isang parameter kagaya ng size. So, kunwari, ang size natin is uh, 10. Okay? Uh, kailangan natin i-consider yung number of sides kasi kung number of sides is equals to 3, then triangle ang ginagawa natin o kinocompute natin area. Kaya ang formula niya will be size times size divided by 2. Bakit meron divide by 2, sir? Uh, ito yung naiisip ko kasi yung pinakamadaling formula para makompute yung uh, isang triangle. Explain ko. Diba ang formula natin para uh, makompute yung area ng isang square is, uh, for example, we just have to, where's that? Okay. So, we just have to multiply yung uh, size times by itself. So, kung 10 yan, ibig sabihin, sorry sa drawing, no? 10 times 10, ibig sabihin, ang area ng square na to is 100. Ngayon, ibig sabihin, kung ang ginagawa natin is triangle, kailangan lang nating hatiin yan sa gitna. So, yung part lang na to, no? yung part lang na to, yung i-compute natin, ibig sabihin, kung ano man yung naging sagot natin kanina, which is 100, i-divide lang natin yan ng 2, at makukuha na natin yung area ng triangle. Kaya meron tayong divide by 2 dito. Ngayon, kung ang number of sides naman natin is 4, then definitely, mumultiply lang natin yan by itself. Ibig sabihin, ito yung formula natin para makuha yung square. Okay? Naintindihan? So, ito yung ating unang method. Ngayon, ang tanong, paano naman kung ang i-compute natin is rectangle? Iba kasi ang rectangle. Ang rectangle, kailangan mo ng height at saka width. Kasi, uh, hindi kagaya ng square na pantay lang yan, kailangan mong makuha sa rectangle ito at saka ito. I-multiply mo yung length, ay yung length dun sa width or height dun sa width. Okay? So, ngayon, kung ganun yung case, ibig sabihin, kailangan natin gumawa ng overload. Gagawa ulit tayo ng isang method, parehas ang pangalan, pero this time, tatanggap ng dalawang parameter. Isang parameter na height, at another double parameter na tatanggap ng width. Dito, okay, itatanong pa rin natin yung number of sides. Kasi kahit rectangle naman yan, no, pwede pa rin naman siyang, I mean, kung dalawa yung in-input mo, applicable pa rin yan dun sa triangle. So, same pa rin. Pero instead of uh, size times size, syempre nagpalit tayo ng parameter, magiging height times width na to, divide by 2. Ngayon, kung rectangle yan, that is simply height times width. Bakit pala meron tayong return 0 dito? Kasi kung 5 na yung number of sides, hindi na yan kaya ng shape. ba? Kasi 5 is pentagon. So, iba yung way ng pag-compute ng area para dito. Pero, to simplify the example muna, ganito mo yung ginagawa natin. So, ano yung nagawa natin sa parent class na shape? Gumawa tayo ng uh, dalawang property, isang name at isang number of sites at isang method na merong overload. Yung unang method, tatanggap lang ng isang parameter while yung isang method, tatanggap ng dalawang parameter. We already did polymorphism. Okay? So, ito kasi tinatawag nating overloading. Uh, nagawa na natin yung isa sa mga example natin ng polymorphism. Naintindihan, ito yung compile time na tinatawag natin in a form of method overloading. Ngayon, uh, hindi ko na ipa... Hindi, sige. Para mas masaya, no? pakita natin. Gagawa ako ngayon dito ng uh, shape. Kunwari, sh1 is equals to new shape and then open and close parenthesis. Wala pa rin ng constructor na ginawa. So, pwede ko ngayon i-declare yung sh. For example, name is equals to square. Okay? Square. And then, pwede ko ding iset yung kanyang sh dot number, sh dot, sorry, dot number of sides. For example, 4. And then, kapag uh, tinawag ko yung sh1 dot uh, get area, which is isa lang naman. Dalawa yung ganito ah. Pagkita ko muna ulit. sh1 dot yung get natin dalawa. Overloaded yung isa. Yung isa magpo-provide lang tayo ng size. So, ang size 
na ipoprovide natin is halimbawa 10. So, we're expecting integer to, no? I mean double. Magkakaroon tayo na sagot dito na 100. So, system.out.print Pwede natin sabihin na the area the area of and then idugtong natin yung sh1.name the area of square and then is and then yung sagot natin dito. Ganun lang. So, let's run and then we can see here the area of square is 100. Okay? So, gawa pa tayo ng isa. Para naman yung triangle. So, mag-declare tayo ng sh2. Okay? So, sh2, sh2, and then sh2 ulit dito, and then sh2 ulit dito. So, as always, tagay ko na yung print line. Baka makalimutan ko na naman. Uh, this one will be 3 para sa number of sides. And then, papalitan ko ito ng triangle. Okay? So, if we run this, we're expecting 50 kasi kalahati lang ng square yung kukunin natin. Okay? Ngayon, uh, dito, ito yung sinasabi natin sa polymorphism. Nag-invoke lang tayo ng isang method, okay, yung get area, pero nakakuha tayo ng magkaibang result. Pero okay, magalala. Hindi pa natin nagagawa dito yung overloading. Dito pa lang natin gagawin yung overloading, no? So, sa pangatlong beses, Gagawa ulit ako ng isa pang beses, no? isa pang instance ng shape class. Papalitan ko naman to ulit ng 3. At dito papasok yung paggamit natin ng rectangle na merong apat na sides. Ngayon, sa rectangle, ang i-invoke natin, ito yun na, same, same name, no? isang command, pero ibang parameter yung gagamitin natin. Halimbawa, uh, that is a 7 by 4 na rectangle gaya nito so since overloaded yan tatanggapin niya magkakaroon tayo ng same yung uh, goal natin no makuha yung area pero since nagsupply tayo ng dalawang value dito ngayon yung bagsak niyan dun sa overloaded na method so pag niran ko to ito yung makikita natin the area of rectangle is 28.00 so, imagine, no, uh, sa isang object, kagaya ng SH, marami na, marami na tayong nagawa. Nakapag-compute na tayo ng area ng square, area ng triangle, at area ng rectangle. So, reusability pa rin, no? Pero ito pa lang yung code na ginagamit natin. That's object-oriented, no? Ngayon, ang tanong, paano naman kung circle yung ginagawa natin? So, yun yung medyo... Uh, complicated doon kasi iba yung way ng pag-compute natin ng area ng circle. So, again, this time, doon naman natin gagawin yung pangalawang klase o pangalawang type ng polymorphism, yung tinatawag nating runtime polymorphism o yung tinatawag nating method overriding. So, ipapakita natin sa inyo. Itong circle na to, i-extend lang niya. So, extends, mag inherit tayo mula dun sa shape. Okay? Ngayon, kapag once na nag-inherit tayo mula doon sa shape, lahat ng code na nandito sa shape is kukunin niya doon sa child class. Virtually, ah. Virtually parang copy-paste. Ngayon, pag in-invoke natin yung method na get area, iba yung gusto nating mangyari. Okay? Kasi hindi naman siya uh, minumultiply ng height tsaka width, hindi rin naman siya minumultiply by itself. May sariling formula yung uh, pagkuha sa circle. So, anong gagawin natin? Imbis na tatawagin natin yung method ng parent, i-o-overwrite natin siya. Yun yung keyword, no? Uh, linawin lang natin. Dalawang klase yan. Yung una yung tinatawag natin compile time. Okay? Sa compile time polymorphism, ang ginagawa natin is overloading. Tama? Ngayon, yung tinatawag naman nating runtime polymorphism, ang ginagawa, ginagamit naman natin dito is overriding. So, sa overriding, ang ginagawa natin dito, kagaya halimbawa, kung meron kang file na existing, kunwari, meron ka ng doc1.doc sa desktop, 
ipinapipaste mo yung file na may parehas na file name. Anong sasabihin sa inang Windows? Do you want to override the file? Pag nag -yes ka, papatungan lang yun. So, the same concept applies here. Ang overriding is a means para yung ating mga original methods mula dun sa class ay mabura or mapatungan nung gagawin natin mula dun sa ating child class. Okay, without further ado, ipapakita ko sa inyo. Gagawa ngayon ako dito ng public. Actually, para masaya, no? Kaka-copy-paste ko na lang yung isang example. Kagaya nito. Sa akala ba walang copy-paste? Kalma, no? Hindi pa yan. Ngayon, instead na double size ang gagamitin natin, gagamitin ko dito will be radius. And then, buburahin ko muna to. Anong bala kong gawin? Very simple. I-return ko lang yung math dot pi. Naalala pa ninyo yung math dot pi, diba? Tinuro ko yun last time. So, para makuha natin yung 3.1416 kasi ang formula ng area of circle is area is equals to pi r squared. So, we have the pi. Next is we have naman the radius. So, gagamit naman ulit ako dito ng math dot pow. Okay? And then, ang kukunin natin sa math dot pow natin is yung radius raised to the second power. So, eto na ngayon yan. Ngayon, bilang connotation sa Java, it is important na ilagay natin itong at override to indicate, no? To indicate na yung method na to o yung method declaration na to is intended to override a method declaration in the super type. Ibig sabihin yung uh, parent class, no? Kung meron siyang ganitong method, ang balak natin is i-override natin siya. So, annotation ang tawag natin sa mga to. So, ina-annotate lang natin na yung get area na to, kung meron man ako naman ang get area mula doon sa akin parent, hindi ko yun gagamitin. Gagamitin ko yung sarili kong method. I will going to override. That's the second type of polymorphism. Bilang patunay, gagawa ako ngayon ng example ng circle. So, circle, for example, circle uh, CH4. Sige, stick tayo sa CH4 is equals to new circle. Okay? Actually, alam nyo, hindi, mamaya na. Sige. Nakapipaste ko to, no? At ang, ganit, ang tanong ngayon, ganito. Nandun pa rin ba yung uh, mga property kagaya ng name at saka number of sides? Definitely yes. Kasi na-inherit yan mula doon sa ating parent. So, tignan natin. CH4 dot. Nandun pa rin yung name. Nandun pa rin yung number of sides. Remember, naka-indicate shape, no? Yung get area. How about yung get area? Meron tayong get area dito. At Radius yung kinukuha ko at kukunin niya sa circle. Just in case na magsusupply ako ng dalawang values, gagana pa rin yun dun sa shape. Ibig sabihin, gagana pa rin yung overloading natin. Ang ino-overwrite lang natin yung single parameter para dun sa square. So, gawin na natin. Papangalanan natin tong circle. Okay? And then number of sides, zero. Actually, kahit ilan ang ilagay mo dito, doesn't matter, no? wala na siyang pakialam kasi hindi naman kino-consider yung number of sides doon sa pag-compute natin ng uh, get area no ating circle. So, ang gagawin lang natin ngayon, i-specify lang natin yung radius na kunwari 10. 10 yung radius na gagamitin natin. So, we are expecting na the area of circle will be equal sa 314.16 something. Okay? Ito yun. So, tama pa rin yung naging resulta. Again, Nung in-invoke natin tong get area na to, ang ginamit niya is yung get area nung uh, circle class. Hindi yung inherited mula dun sa parent. Ang tawag natin dito is overriding. Okay, at ang tawag naman natin dito is over overloading. Naintindihan? So, hopefully, no, nakuha niyo pinagkaiba ng overloading at saka overriding. Again, mabilis ang recap. Ang overloading is uh, a means kung saan Meron kang isang method, pero magkakaiba yung mga method signature. That's it. Magkakaiba ng parameter o tatanggap yung parameter. Ang method overriding is the ability na patungan no? or burahin yung original na copy ng ating uh, method at papalitan natin yung sarili nating version ng method. So, that's overriding. Okay, so hopefully, 
Naintindihan nyo na kung paano ginagawa yung polymorphism. So, we will now going to go back to our lesson. So, we have runtime polymorphism. Actually, uh, na-discuss ko siya pala bigla, no? Na-excite ako, no? Dapat pala ang dinemo ko muna sa inyo is yung compile time polymorphism. Pero, wala eh. Na-discuss ko na rin pati yung runtime. Pero, pakita ko na rin sa inyo. Kaya pala nag-iisip ako kanina, parang may mali. Parang hindi ko pa ito nakita kanina sa mga slides. Anyways, uh, ito yung frequel. So, pag-usapan natin. Uh, runtime polymorphism, it is also known as dynamic method dispatch. It is a process in which a um, function call to the overridden method is resolved at runtime. This type of polymorphism is achieved by method overriding. So, kagaya nga nung sinabi ko kanina, no, na-discuss na natin ito. Papakita ko na lang, discuss ko na lang na mabilisan ito. Uh, kagaya nung ginawa natin kanina, meron tayong base o yung ating parent class at meron siyang method, no? Nung kanina yung compute area. Pero dito yung method na fun o void fun. Ngayon, sa isang subclass o derived class, kapag gumawa ka ng exact replica ng method name na yun, papatungan lang niya yung doon sa kanyang base class. So, that is uh, the concept of overriding na again, ginawa na natin kanina. So, method overriding occurs when a derived class has definition for one of the member functions of the base class. That base function is said to be overridden. So, na-demo ko na rin yan kanina. Kaya nga, wala na akong pwedeng ipakita sa inyo. Na-discuss ko na lahat yung konsepto ng polymer. Him. That means, that's the end of our lesson. I hope you learned something sa lesson natin ito. And that's the end of lesson 20.2. Credits to geeksforgeeks.org as the main source of the content in this tutorial. If you love this video, kindly drop a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you.